Aloha, and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of Hawaii Restaurant Association. Joining me today is Hawaii Restaurant Association's Board Director, Sarah Nguyen, who is also the owner of Pizza Press in Pearl City. I also have John Gentili, Chief Revenue Officer, ERC Today. Welcome, you two. Thank you. Hey. Thank you for having us. Thank Absolutely. you. Today, today we're answering questions regarding the employee retention credit, also referred to as the ERC. Now, to clarify, I would like to state that Hawaii Restaurant Association is not a tax professional. Today's discussion is a general discussion, and business owners, please consult with your tax professional on your specific business and financial situation. So the ERC will not run out of funds, nor does it need to be paid back. It is a tax credit. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is always looking for ways to assist restaurants and businesses to keep their doors open. The ERC was authorized under the CARES Act and encourages businesses to keep employees on payroll. So claim your tax credit before it expires on December 31st 2021. Today, we will be discussing the differences between 2020 and 2021 rules, the overlap of other grants, such as the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, PPP, IDLE, and things to keep in mind while filing for this tax credit. I'm going to now turn it over to John, who has a few slides to show us. Thanks so much. Appreciate everyone's time. So, who who is ERC today? And um, that's what we're going to talk about today, as well as the employer attention credit. Um, it's a phenomenal opportunity. It's a generational opportunity. And uh, again, any business should definitely apply because everybody's hurting right now. So who is ERC today? Um, ERC today is a company based out of Huntersville, North Carolina. Um, we let anybody apply to our website. And, or our partners' websites at no charge, because there's a lot of people that don't know about the employer retention credit right now. Again, once someone applies, within five days, we can turn around and return. We can also provide opportunities for audit protection. We have ind industry leading speed, and with a corporate client, we could do things quickly. We'll work as, with as, as, as small as five employees up to as many employees that, that qualify. We're also able to complete the 941X forms. So from start to finish, we are doing everything for the business. Again, what is the ERC? ERC stands for the Employee Retention Credit. It was a, a credit put, in, put together by the CARES Act and signed into law on March 27th. 2020. It's a COVID-19 economic stimulus program. Originally, businesses had to choose between the Paycheck Protection Program or the ERC until March of this year when the IRS released a notice 2021, which updated the guidance to allow businesses to participate in both programs, not just the PPP, but both PPP and the employer retention credit. So businesses can go back to the beginning of March to claim for this. This is a generation opportunity as mentioned before, because now businesses can get both. On August of this year, the IRS expanded the definition of an eligible employer to include a program called the Recovery Startup Business. We'll get in into that soon. It's called a tax credit, but it can be received as a cash payment directly from the IRS. There's no dollar minute limit on the amount a business can receive. There's also no requirements on how the business, how the money can be sent, spent, excuse me. Originally, it was just applied to 2020. However, the American Rescue Plan Act extended the program into 2021. It interacts very cl closely with the PPP program, which everyone's familiar with. However, every dollar of wages can potentially be used for either program, but not for both. 
There's a special process to optimize both these programs. And that's what we do at ERC today. The program requires a significant knowledge of the client, the unique details of how it's, it was by, impacted by COVID-19. There's a significant amount of payroll information that needs to be analyzed. And again, it's very difficult to do this on, on, on your behalf. So that's what ERC does. We start from application to the amended 941 on your behalf. Who qualifies? There's really three programs. Here, we're gonna talk about two. The 2020 program and the 2021 program. Every employer must issue W-2s and file 941. That's the most important piece. In 2020, you had to have 100 full-time employees or less. In 2019, as well as 100 full-time employees or less in 2020. Very important to understand that this program dates back to 2019. It compares 2019 to 2020, and 2019 to 2021. In 2021, the program switched. Instead of it being 100 full-time employees, it was 500 full-time employees. Again, two different programs, up to 100 full-time employees in 2020 and up to 500 full-time employees in 2021. Very important to note, you could have as, as many part-time employees as, as you want in either program. So if you had 80 full-time employees, you could have two, 300 part-time employees. Just make sure that you, you, you classify them as 100 full-time or less in 2020 and 500 full-time or less in 2021. The next is an either-or statement. You don't need to meet both of these. You can either meet the reduction in sales method or the shutdown method. So if your business took a 50% reduction in sales from one quarter of 19 to the light quarter of 20, so for example, if your business took did 100,000 in sales in Q3 19 and 50,000 in sales in Q3 20, you qualify. Go to 2021, instead of it being a 50% reduction, it's a 20% reduction. So, We'll use the same example. If you did 100,000 in sales in Q3-19 or Q2-19, you had to do 20% less. So you had to do 80,000 in Q2-2021. There are some businesses, especially restaurants that we've worked with that didn't take a 50% reduction or a 20% reduction. Some of them made money. Some of them increased their sales. So in that instance, there's another way to qualify. That is called the shutdown method. So what does that mean? So if your business was fully shut down or partially shut down, or as part of a, a state restriction like Hawaii is right now, you qualify. Most restaurants in the country qualify on option B due to the government or state shutdown. This is the financial opportunity. This is where it really makes sense for a lot of businesses, especially in Hawaii. On, in 2020, you can receive up to 50% of the wages to $10,000 per employee for the pay period. The period in 2020 was March 12th through the end of the year. Again, you can get up to $5,000 per employee for that period. So I'll give you an example. You paid three employees $10,000. You could get $5,000. If you had an additional employee, you paid them $3,000. You can get 50% of the three. And that's how the program works for 2020. Let's move over to 2021. It gets very lucrative here. Instead of it being a year program, it's a per quarter program, and it's 70% of the wages up to $10,000. That's $7,000 per employee per quarter, or up to $7,000 per employee per quarter. So there are going to be some businesses that potentially can qualify for the full $28,000, which is $7,000 per employee every quarter of 2021. We've had several businesses qualify for 2020 and Q1 and Q2 of this year, and there's several businesses that are already qualified uh, for Q3. A lot of people ask us, when does this program end, John? Well, as, we, as it stands right now, ERC, as we know it, goes until the infrastructure bill is signed. What does that mean? So. 
we all thought the infrastructure bill was going to be signed a couple of months ago, or at least we thought it'd be signed by now, but it hasn't. So once the infrastructure bill is signed, businesses will not be able to claim credit past the sign date. So let's say it gets signed December 1st. Businesses could claim 2-4 up to the sign signing of that bill. But more importantly, the biggest unknown is how long do I have the opportunity to take advantage of this? You have three years to amend a filed 941. So for example, if you filed a 941 in 2-3-2020, you have three years from that date to go back and, 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 and claim opportunity for it. Same thing for, for 2024. You have three years uh, for 2021 to claim credit for that. The last piece is the recovery startup business. This is an enormous opportunity for, for Hawaii, especially because there are a lot of businesses that opened up and started operations after February 15, 2020. Unfortunately, you opened up during the pandemic and you probably had some tough times, but the IRS created a third rendition of the ERC that's helping a lot of businesses. They just don't know about it. And what does that mean? So if your business has under a million dollars in annual gross receipts, you qualify. It's very simple. You can claim up to $7,000 per employee per quarter for Q3 and Q4 with a maximum of $50,000 in Q3 and Q4. So again, new business started after February 15th. You can get up to $100,000 in 2020 across two quarters. Lastly, how do you do this? How, do, how, how does your business see if you qualify or not? Well, that's where we come in. What you do is you can apply online at ERC today slash HRA. It doesn't cost anything to apply. What we recommend you do is go online, you fill out the application. Within one to two business days, we're gonna reply back with a message that tells you you qualify, you don't qualify, most likely you'll qualify unless you're over the, the, the limit. Uh, or we need more information to help you qualify. And that's specifically, typically with a control group. If you own multiple restaurants, we need to analyze your, your ownership structure to ensure that your business qualifies under the guidelines. But if your business does qualify, we're gonna follow up with a message and say, congratulations, your business qualifies for up to a certain dollar amount. We're going to explain our process, we're going to explain our fees, and we're going to give you the opportunity for us to analyze it. We'll set up a secure Dropbox, you submit your information. Within two to three days, we follow up and say, congratulations, our initial estimates were, and I'll just give an example, your initial estimates were half a million dollars in ERC. You're within 22% of our initial estimates. It is not now time for you to make the decision to either move forward with the ERC today, or take what you've learned and do it yourself or find another resource. Again, we do most of the work up front without having you sign a contract or paying us. So if you feel like we've done a good job and you want to move forward with us, you pay us a minimal deposit, you sign a contract, we give you the exact dollar amount that you're going to receive. We have you sign a contract. We complete the return. We tell you, we give you the amount. We send it to you in an email, you receive it, you sign the 941X that we amended for you, and then you send it to the IRS. And if you qualify for more periods, we'll start working on the next period, the exact same period that we, that we did for you, that we had sent to you. Once you send it to the IRS, it takes about four to six months to get paid. That's a long time. However, we do have insight with the IRS and we will notify you ahead of time if you're going to get paid. So let's say you file today, six months from now, you're going to get paid. We're going to let you know ahead of time if you're going to get paid or not. That's the story. I hope you apply. It's a great opportunity. Don't miss out. As we know now, you have three, three years to amend, but it takes four or six months. So if you want it now, apply now. Thank you, John. So now I'm going to pass the ball over to Sarah, who has a few questions for you. 
Great. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so for us, we didn't think that we, we qualify, but we are going to go through the process. And so thank you so much for the information. It was very helpful. And so some of the questions that I do have, um, we are going so for, for us at the Pizza Press, we have a meeting set up with, with our CPA tomorrow. And so the question that I have is, what kind of questions should I ask the, the, the CPA preparing for my meeting tomorrow? Let me ask you, let me ask you a question is, who do, who do you do your payroll through? That's Ceridian. Ceridian. So the most important thing is, is to ensure that, that your CPA has access to your payroll data. Uh, I'm not sure if they do. If they, if they do, I would, I would prepare to run the reports. And if you need additional information, I can, after our, our, our discussion, I can help you with that. Um, but on the other hand, is your CPA most likely shouldn't, should have an understanding of, of the ERC. Um, However, if they don't, one great thing about us is we work with a lot of CPA firms as well. Uh, we're like an extension to them. Uh, but at the end of the day, what you want to make sure you, you're knowledgeable of is your PPP information. That's, you wanna, that's probably the most important part. If you offered health insurance, and not many restaurants did, but if you did, you want to make sure you don't know the amount of premium the employer paid. Because the employer paid premium for health insurance can be used for wages for the employer retention credit. That's one thing that a lot of people don't know about. But that, that, then you want to make sure you can have access to your 941s. If, if you don't have it, and you, obviously you trust your CPA, you can grant them access to Sheridan and have them pull the 941s for you, as well as have a, a check register uh, available for 19, 20, and 21. Uh, as well as hours. You want to make sure you run hours reports for all your employees because they want to analyze that as well. All right, good to know. Um, my next question. So as far as with the process, what, what do you feel is the most difficult part of the process when submit, submitting for um, the IRC? The, the most difficult process for us is when we work with a client that either A, doesn't have a good relationship with their CPA, or two, when we ask for data, they don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so that's the hard, honestly, that, that is about the, that's the, the process that delays our work. And we could do this pretty quickly, uh, typically in five days. But if we ask a question and they don't have access to it, they typically have to reach out to their CPA like you, like you are or they reach out to the payroll company. And what we found is a lot of the payroll companies aren't doing this. So it just extends the process. But if you have all the data, things can go, go quickly, either through us or, or, or your CPA. Okay, all right. Um, does, does a credit apply to wages and reported tips or just wages only? But actually both. And that's one thing that we, we do internally is we will analyze all that. Uh, in, I mean, in most cases, we just say, hey, let us grant, grant us access to your payroll. We'll go run all the reports ourselves. We know exactly what reports to run and not to run uh, because, you know, some of that can be tedious. Some of it can be very involved. And when you're not used to running the reports, because this isn't your typical process, you know, most people don't know about this. And when we go into detail, they will get confused. So it's one part of our consulting process is, is at least on our end is let us take all the hardship off your shoulders and put it on ours. Good. Um, last questions as far as with, um, with your services. Uh, and so, for example, if a um, business, they went through you, they fill out the, the information, they went online and um, they do not qualify. So is there a fee or service that you charge if they don't qualify? No, nope. we will not charge them anything. We won't even get into that conversation unless we guarantee they're going to get something. So, for, so you know, when we give an estimate, we, I, I'll give you the example of the half a million. Yeah. We give an estimate that they're gonna, we believe they're going to get up to half a million. Once we analyze their data, we know the exact number. We give them the opportunity to move forward or you know, go somewhere else. Uh, but one thing I will add uh, that's very important to this, uh, it, it's not talked about much, but it's probably the most important part is down the road. 
So, you know, we'll, I'll use you as an example. So let's, let's say for your restaurant, you get $100,000, right? Uh, you use it for your business. You know, you do something innovative, you open a new location or you do something uh, that everyone loves that because you're, you're so innovative. So two or three years down the road, you've spent 80 grand, right? You get audited. They come back and say, you know what? We don't feel like you got, you qualify. Most likely you did, but let's just say you didn't, right? It's up to the IRS, as we all know, to determine if you qualify or not. So, in the fact that you get audited and for some reason you did not qualify or didn't qualify for as much as is, is either we, we qualified you for, we provide auto support. That's very key in, the, in, this, in this situation is you come back to us, we support you with the audit based on the data that, that you supplied us and we work with you on. We supply you with the information you need to go through the audit. And let's say we're wrong, right? And let, we will refund 100% of our fees to you. Which is, you know. Yeah. That's very, very, it's like an insurance policy, basically. Uh -huh. because restaurants do qualify. Most of the restaurants do qualify. Unless you don't have, like, for example, if you didn't have indoor dining, those, are, those don't qualify. Uh, some do, but most don't. Uh -huh. But again, we want to make, want to make sure that whoever you go through, your CA, your CPA, you want to be able to trust that they know what they're doing with this. Because it's extremely complex. Good. Good to know. Thank you so much. Those are all the questions that I have. Carol, are there additional questions that you have? Yes. I wanted to also talk about some of the misconceptions, John. You know, as you know, I hear it all day long. After we had our webinar at the Hawaii Restaurant Association and John was on it, you know, everyone was calling me and saying, wait a minute, I heard that if I receive the restaurant revitalization fund, which is a grant, or I had a PPP that was forgiven, the misconception is that I don't qualify for the ERC. John, you want to talk about it? Absolutely. That's that's number one misperception, as well as a couple others. It doesn't make a difference if you got it or not. We tell everyone to, to apply. Now, you may not get as much. But if there's wages left over for ERC, you'll get something and something's better than nothing, right? So again, perfect situation, apply. Because don't think you don't qualify. Don't think because you got PPP one or two, you don't qualify. A lot of people are giving bad information out. So take it upon yourself to do what's right for you and your business and apply. You may not get as much as you think you're going to get, but if you get a dollar, it's more than a dollar you had yesterday. That's exactly what I told them. So what are some of the other misconceptions that are out there, John? Because you know, I could go through my list, but you tell me the top misconceptions because that would really help our listeners um, know, you know that that is a misconception. It isn't the truth. The, the, the top, the top misconception exception of this is PPP. That's the number one. Because even though the IRS made an announcement in March, a lot of people just don't know about it. So if you got PPP one or PPP two, you still definitely qualify. As, as I said before, you just may not have as much wages left over. Here, the, the other misconception is, okay, I got 2020, but I don't get 2021. That's incorrect as well. You qualify for every period that you that you're eligible for. The other piece is, oh, my sales run down 50%. Or people are comparing 2021 to 2020. That's the other incorrect part of this. Everything dates back to 2019. Again, don't try to figure this out yourself. Reach out to us, apply through our website. It doesn't hurt to apply. And you may get way more than, than you expect, but you're not going to know until, until you apply with us. There's, I could talk all day about the misconceptions on this. Uh, we've worked with numerous businesses, numerous CPA firms that were doing this and elected to work with us because 
we do this, it's all we do, and we do it right. And again, we're doing what's right for the customer and not to get in, 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 into details about our fees, but the more you get for a credit, the less we take. Again, the more you make, the less we make, because it's all about you. It's not about us, it's about you and your business and trying to help your employees out. And you know what, getting through this, these are tough times for us right now, but let us help you. If you win, we win. Thank you, John. So in closing, I just want to mention one more time that Hawaii Restaurant Association is not a tax professional. You still need to consult your financial advisor and your tax professional. And again, if, you're if your business qualifies, the employee retention credit is a stimulus for your business designed to support those that were impacted by the pandemic. So time is running out, everyone. As John said, it's when that infrastructure bill gets signed or December 31st, whichever comes first. So please, I'm hoping that businesses take advantage. It's not only restaurants, it's any business that was impacted by the pandemic. And again, as always, I'm Cheryl from the Hawaii Restaurant Association. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice for Hawaii's food service and restaurants here in Hawaii. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you.